click the bell icon and subscribe to our channel so that you will not miss any classes hello welcome to class the first recombinant cell that is artificially the first recombinant cell was developed in 1972 by two scientists Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen they developed first artificial recombinant cell by using two related bacteria they are salmonella salmonella typhi murium salmonella typhi murium and escherichia coli these two are the related bacteria what they did is they isolated they isolated a plasmid of plasmid of salmonella plasmids are the circular double stranded autonomously replicating dna we will be discussing this in detail further that is in the tools of recombinant dna technology as per now you know that it is a autonomously replicating that is independently replicating double stranded dna it also have many genes in it in the plasmid of uh, salmonella typhi murium they isolated from this plasmid they isolated a antibiotic antibiotic resistance g from the plasmid of salmonella typhi murium they isolated a antibiotic resistance gene that is uh say for example here there is a presence of antibiotic resistant gene that is it is present along with the plasmid so what they have to do they have to separate it from this plasmid and it should be taken out for doing that there is a use of enzyme how they separated it by treating with the enzymes called restriction restriction enzymes or endonucleases restriction endonucleases they treated the plasmid with restriction endonucleases and they isolated antibiotic resistant g so here is the antibiotic resistant g and so from the concept previously what we studied consider it as a aligned piece of dna whenever it is introduced into the other organism it will it will not divide on its own for that what it require it require a host so the host was the escherichia coli so what they did is directly they will not introduce it into the escherichia coli what they have to do they have to introduce with the plasmid of escherichia coli so here what they did they isolated the plasmid of escherichia coli so this is a plasmid of plasmid of escherichia coli so here it is a closed one that is it is not having a free ends it is a circular dna molecule i already told plasmids so for attaching this this plasmid should have the cuts so for cutting the dna i told already they make use of restriction enzyme so here also they treat the plasmid with the same restriction enzyme not of different i will say to why further 
why they have been treated with the same restriction enzyme there is a reason so i will explain it later so here they treat it with the same restriction endonuclease and there is a creation of cut ends like this there is a creation of cut ends now these two are joined these two are joined for joining something we need glue right so for a, if a paper piece of paper sir the two piece of paper are there to join them we need a stapler or a glue so here also there are two pieces to join them there is a requirement of glue so here in a uh, molecular biology or in biotechnology the glues are enzyme there are certain group of enzymes called ligases so they treat it with the enzyme ligase when the ligase is added then these two pieces of gdna are joined so here so there is a joining of two pieces of dna now the aligned piece of dna is integrated with the host dna or the chromosome now we can call it as a recombinant dna this is called recombinant dna it has recombined with the the aligned piece of dna now what is next according to what we studied before it has to be transferred into the host the host is here the esterasia coli so i'll continue here so here is the recombinant dna molecule so this recombinant dna molecule is transformed is transformed into host the host is here is the host here is esterasia coli so here the host will have the recombinant cell sorry the recombinant dna when this undergo multiplication or division between the cells when it undergo cell division the dna will also multiplies so here many number of cells produce consider that many copies of dna are produced along with the aligned piece of dna so what we studied before it as cloning so after production there will be a production of the product of our interest also so now it is called a recombinant cell so here the host may be called as recombinant cell so this is how stanley cohen and herbert boyer they constructed the first ever recombinant cell that is esterasia coli having the antibiotic resistant gene of salmonella typhi murium the gene is of aligned gene is belonging to salmonella typhi murium but it is expressed in esterasia coli so we are calling it as recombinant cell so with the inspiration of this many recombinant cells were developed successfully and we are having many of the products produced from the recombinant cells now we have talked many uh, tools used here like we have talked about plasmids right restriction enzymes or restriction endonucleases we have studied we have heard the term ligase and uh, what else okay the host and transformation there are many methods of transformation so they used many key terms or tools 
in order to conduct a or in order to construct a recombinant cell. That means in order to construct a recombinant cell, there is a requirement of many tools like plasmids, restriction enzymes, ligases, host, transformation techniques. So these are all the tools used in recombinant DNA technology. In order to understand it very detail, the process of recombinant DNA technology, we need to understand in detail the tools of recombinant DNA technology. So that we shall continue from the next class.